I'm Adam. I'm visiting from Melbourne. My name's Daniel. I'm uh, from Melbourne as well. Modbot is a set of building blocks that helps anyone build their own useful robot. I was born in Papua New Guinea, um, which is a tropical island kind of to the north of Australia, to parents who are effectively missionaries. So I was um, brought up with volcanoes and crocodiles and earthquakes and all sorts of stuff going on. But I still spent most of my time in the shed building things. I used to build my own spear guns and slingshots and all sorts of stuff as a kid. But then I kind of got to about 12 and decided the cars were cooler and um, built a dune buggy in high school at the age of 14. I was born and grew up in a place called Perth. Probably the quintessential Australian experience, I guess. Sort of grew up in the bush, surrounded by snakes. And, and loved that experience, actually, surrounded by a musical family. My mum and dad were highly creative. I became an engineer largely because my mum and dad told me I shouldn't become a musician. I really think that, you know, real creators, real innovators, real interesting people are those that sort of take ownership on their own personality and try to put that into the work that they do. With Modbot, we've taken all of those, those separate components that an engineer would normally have to choose. We've integrated them all into a set of basic building blocks. So the servo is probably the core aspect of it. That's where the motion comes from. That's the motor and transmission and encoder all packaged into one unit. Then we've got a, a set of, of links and joints, which um, basically let you build out any kind of robot arm, any serial manipulator, or any like, simple like, little 3D printer, whatever you want, um, because they're kind of universal building blocks. Putting robotics in the home, putting robotics into you know, the hands of everyday inventors so that they can build medical devices, build whatever they want. Seems like something that I think could be um, massive. Hardware Battlefield looks like a, an amazing opportunity to get our project out into the real world with a bang. You guys obviously have pretty good um, coverage out there in the, in the tech entrepreneurship space. We thought it was appropriate to do it with Star. Daniel, Adam, judges. You have six minutes to present, and the timer starts now. Hi, I'm Daniel, co-founder of Modbot. For the better part of a century, we've been promised robots. Authors and creative minds have predicted a future where humans do little work and leave the heavy lifting to our robot friends. Yet here we are into the new millennium, and not a robot butler in sight. So where are all the cool robots? Well, to answer that, let's first look at what a robot needs. In short, it needs brains, sensors, software, and hardware. Now, in recent years, we've seen major improvement in these areas. The complexity of robotic brains has been simplified by Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and smartphones. Sensors like the Microsoft Connect and Leap Motion have become prolific. Software development has become easier through GitHub, cloud computing. Commoditization of these parts of the robot has made them less expensive and more accessible. As a result, Robots are no longer constrained by these parts. They're instead constrained by the hardware. As an example, consider Honda's Asimo. As one of the most humanoid robots available, he costs roughly $1 million just to manufacture. And most of that comes from complex actuators and hardware. Now, there are plenty of challenges in the software development, but we believe if more people can afford and access quality hardware, then the pace of innovation can be massively increased. This is where Modbot steps in. We realized we have to get robots out of expensive research labs and into the hands of everyday inventors. For that, we need good quality and affordable robot parts. Meet Modbot. Modbot identifies the common building blocks found in all robots, the servo, the joint, and the link. They've been recreated from first principles, and they form the fundamental set. They're versatile, so you can use them to build a robot arm, a 3D printer, or even a humanoid robot. If you don't like what you've built, just disassemble and build something else. You can use our phone app to do hardware programming on the fly, record keyframes and repeat sequences wirelessly, making Modbot easy to use for rapid prototyping. Modbot puts your ideas into the cloud with our virtual robot builder. You can assemble and program your robot on the fly, inside of the browser, and test and simulate in a real physics engine. The VR builder has been designed to promote sharing, and when you're done, you can click the order button. Now, the vision certainly seems big, but the vision is big because the problem is big. I used to build robots for the defense sector, and Modbot would have, would have saved me endless pain. My co-founder has had the same problems in the auto automotive industry. May I introduce Adam, co-founder of Modbot. Hi. 
Now, um, in my experience as an engineer, um, it, was, it was pretty regular that I'd have to go ahead and actually build a robot joint from scratch. So if I was to do that now, this is what I'd, this is what I'd be facing. I'd have to choose an encoder to get my precision, a motor to do the, the, the driving, a transmission to increase the torque, and a set of bearings to take the load. Um, what we've done with ModBot is actually combine all of that into one little unit, uh, which is, is tightly, tightly integrated. Now, that level of integration gets us a few advantages. It gets us advantages in cost, where we've managed to reduce the cost of an in industrial equivalent by about one-tenth. Um, and it also gets us advantages in compactness and weight efficiency. So th the, the way this joint is assembled, as you'll see in a second, gives us significant benefits. What we've got in front of you is uh, a servo. Um, if we could just change screens. So this is the servo joint. Now this gives us motion, and this is an intelligent motion package with uh, networking built in, uh, just a contact here which carries power and a serial bus. Um, the motor driver and everything is all inside that package. Now if we want to build something useful, we need to add a bit of hardware that will connect this servo to a, you know, a real life object that will let us move it. Um, so what you can see here is a, a package where we've got a joint, and another joint surrounding the servo. And then each of those joints can actually connect to another servo or a link. Now, once you zoom out a bit, you can see that that is connected to a, a, an arm, which can be connected to another piece the same and another piece the same. And all of a sudden, you've got a six degree of freedom robot camera dolly. Um, so just, just these three unique parts uh, let you build an amazing array of, of, of engineering feats that would have been very difficult otherwise. Um, now, anyone here who's actually built something robotic or seen something move that you've created knows the thrill that you get when, when your creation comes to life. And that's basically what we want to make really accessible with ModBot. Cool. Well, you can see how easy it is to build uh, a robot arm, but we really believe that this is just the beginning. We imagine uh, a six degree of freedom robot camera dolly for $1,200. A four degree of freedom uh, racing car simulator for gamers for $800. Researchers could build a four degree of freedom prosthetic leg for $800. We'll just switch over to the other screen and you can have a look at some of the examples that we've got. We believe that this will revolutionize the way that robots are built and who they're built by. Small businesses will be able to afford to build entire production lines locally. Apple and IBM put personal computers into the home and we believe that ModBot can do the same for robots. Robots are going to be big. That's why we're launching our crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo. If you like robots and you want to build your own, you can back us today. There's no need to wait for the robot revolution. With ModBot, it's up to you. Thank you. Very good. Who wants to build a robot? Doug, just question? <laughs> yeah. Can we, we can reset the clock now. How long have you guys been working on this? The concept has been around for about three years. Uh, it's, only, it's only become a, a real business incorporated and all the rest as of about three months ago. So um, we've been working together for a lot longer than that, obviously, but as a legal entity, it's only just arrived. <laughs> How do you see the rest of the system? So this is closing the loop around one, yes. one degree of freedom. How, how do you imagine people assembling a full system? What are the missing uh, Yeah, well, uh, with the, the camera, six degree freedom arm I showed before, that actually only uses three unique parts for the bulk of the arm. So it's actually that same one degree of freedom over and over again, uh, repeated in a, in a different orientation. Uh, and each of those adds another degree of freedom. So you can build it all the way up from one to, to six to seven, as many I, as you want. I guess I, if you could talk to sort of the, the software to control the intelligence of the thing ah, that yes. you build. Yes. Daniel's best place to answer that. Uh, well, most of it is designed to be able to promote um, the open source community. So what we'll do is we'll build a set of libraries that will support interfacing with Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and the robot operating system ROS. That should get you halfway there. Uh, the rest of it then should become a mechanism for you to innovate. And our intention is to provide an online portal, which is our virtual robot builder, for you to share and collaborate those ideas. Um, we think that that might actually enable the people that may not be able to afford hardware necessarily up front can build entire projects and then when they're ready to get it with their friends they can purchase the parts. What makes you confident that you guys will be able to uh, to build this? Well Daniel's got um, well, 10 years experience um, building robots with the defense sector. Uh, my background is in manufacturing and the automotive industry. Um, I've also built food manufacturing machines for Coca-Cola and all the rest. Um, 
look, there are de definite challenges ahead, um, but we believe this really needs to be done, and no one else is doing it, so we're going to do it. How many of these have you actually built? One. Okay. <laughs> and have you built the online builder yet? No. No, that's, that's what our crowdfunding campaign is for, actually. Um, we're launching this vision to see how much traction it gets, and, and if people buy into the vision, then, then we'll, we'll actually work really, really hard to make it come through. <laughs> um, so uh, this is a really big vision. In terms of sort of how you're getting to market, I imagine you're starting with hobbyists, and then the goal is that some of those hobbyists start really big companies that place really big orders. So do you see the hobbyists as a bit of a loss leader initially, or are you just trying to find those really big order Look, we companies? Look, we hope they're not too much of a loss leader. <laughs> but um, they'll definitely be the earliest adopters. Um, with MakerBot and Arduino, we've seen you know, a huge growth of the, the Maker movement, and um, that kind of hacker ethos is really building up steam again. Um, we want to be the, selling the shovels in the gold rush, essentially. Um, and with Google buying eight robotics companies in the last six months, the, the top end of the, of the, uh, the ecosystem is actually starting to ramp up as well. So uh, we've, we've got quite lucky with our timing here. <laughs> what do you think the barriers are to someone doing the same thing or copying well, the design? Well, actually, that's a really good question. I'm glad you asked it. Um, as of yesterday, we've got um, two provisional patents registered, uh, which protect the, the core internal uh, innovation here, which is the transmission design. Uh, the transmission design is what lets us innovate. Uh, sorry, what's, what lets us integrate this so tightly. Um, now that's protected as of yesterday, and uh, we believe that competitors will have a hard time getting the same package size and the same power output that we've got out of this. Is anything else? Yeah, have you? Um, I know that there's a lot, some some work being done into uh, robotic systems that actually can detect when humans are in the way or um, or interacting with it. Yeah, have you guys thought about that? Absolutely. That's that's a, a massive, a massively important thing for us. Um, we actually design the scale of our of our joints and links around the human body uh, because we know that robots basically have to operate in an environment built by humans. Um, and to that end, uh, every every servo will have um, force feedback built in, which lets you build all sorts of safety systems in in software. Um, so you can limit, for example, the, the, the maximum force in a motion, so that if it comes up against an obstacle like a human arm <laughs> or a finger, it'll it'll only apply a certain amount of force and then stop. And have you talked to any other uh, robotics companies? Not yet. No. Um, no, we, we definitely will be though. Yeah. Do you plan on making money off software and services? Not at this stage. Um, we'd really like to grow the, the ecosystem as fast as possible um, to get, kind of get that critical mass. Um, uh, one day in the future, perhaps there might be commercial libraries that will be accessible um, at a fee, and we might take a commission on that. But, but that's probably the extent of our ambitions to commercialize the software. I know when Spark was running their Kickstarter, I believe they had a couple other Kickstarters using Spark devices in their Kickstarters as well. Do you have any projects coming up that are going to be using this in theirs well, that you can talk yeah. about? Or? We've got an endless, endless number of projects that we'd love to use this for. That's actually why we're building it. <laughs> most, most of our access at the moment, I think, is going to be in the education space. So there's a few um, high schools and a few universities around that we're already speaking to that are basically willing to look at them as you know, final year projects, which I think is very beneficial to us because we can make them accessible. You know, they're visual and they're in the, they're in the education system. They can learn about how to use them. But the development that they do is into projects that we can then utilise to show people how to put them together. So. Yeah. We're going to try and basically not to sell just the parts, but also what you can do with them. Great. Well, I, for one, would like my children to grow up into a world that has robotics, uh, director cells. Me too. Thank you very much, gentlemen.